So again, thank you all for being here. Uh, this is an anxious meeting for our first annual Freedom Rides USA South tour of 10 US states, nine of which are in the South of the US and one in the Midwest. We are leading you through the civil rights trail um, and we are focusing on young activists and artists that powered the civil rights movement and the impacts that the civil rights movement still has on us today. We have with us two of our curators that will be with us on the civil rights trail. And we're really excited to have Mr. Rufus T. Stephen out of Washington, DC, as well as Dr. Salima Marriott out of Baltimore, as well as currently Atlanta. So we're really excited to have him, uh, have both of them there with us here with us today. Um, we're gonna give them an opportunity to introduce themselves more officially. Um, but first we just wanna talk about what the tour will consist of and some of the options that are available for civil right activists that would like to join us free of charge. This is the first tour that we've been able to offer to civil rights activists free of charge. And so if you are out there and you gave your life to that movement, um, please, please contact us. We want to hear from you, um, especially if um, the work you did in your area has not been officially recognized. Please give us an opportunity to connect that history um, to a generation that may not be aware of the impact and power the civil rights had on shaping citizenship, global citizenship, and the standard uh, for holding governments accountable uh, to the citizens that they represent. The civil rights movement in many ways inspired grassroots movements around the world from apartheid in South Africa to Tiananmen Square in China, so on and so forth. And we would like to acknowledge you. So if you are a civil rights activist um, from that era um, and you are still alive today, please let us know, please spread the word um, to your peers and counterparts. Um, next, if you are a student, artist or activist, we have a discount for you. We also have partners like the YMCA, the Y of Central Maryland that are actively um, funding and raising funds to sponsor young people, artists, activists, and students. And so if you are a student, an activist, or an artist, and you're interested in joining us for this tour, please let us know. The YMCA, Y of Central Maryland, is able to help sponsor and defray the cost of your participation. So let us know today. Our contact information is at the bottom of this flyer. Um, last but not least, if you are tourists, hey, this is gonna be a great trip. You're gonna have the opportunity to learn, grow, and enjoy the charm of 10 Southern US states. You'll enjoy live performances, Southern cuisine, art and culture, um, and more importantly, you're gonna help us unearth the humanity and strength of the civil rights activists and artists in that movement. Um, and so please join us if you find yourself in one of those categories. Today, we're gonna talk a little about what's gonna happen on the road. What locations are we gonna travel to? And um, yeah, maybe what you can contribute to those that we visit through service owners. So we're gonna go into that now. While I do, before I do, I want to invite our curators that are on the line with us today to come off camera, unmute yourself, and um, introduce yourself to everyone that's out there listening today. I'd like to begin with Dr. Salima Marriott. Doctor, if you could tell us a little about your history and when you first found yourself in the civil rights movement, how that Okay, I think that I am off camera. We see you, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> this is Salima. So, um, actually, um, I almost refer to myself as post civil civil rights. Uh, my real beginning happened when I was living in New York, and when my oldest child entered the public schools of New York City in 1966. 
So, and I became a parent activist. And from that point on, my activism evolved. And so I think I went from parent activist to um, participating in the anti-Vietnam War movement. And when I relocated back to Baltimore, I continued as an activist and just continued to get involved in a number of different activities from 1968 through, um, I, I guess I would just, rather than to go blow by blow detail, it was mostly uh, more leaning towards Black power, but it was um, <clears throat> about equality and justice. So it is that part of the civil rights movement, which I'm referring to as post-civil rights. Um, and then my activism actually involved into a major focus on women the rights of women, feminism. I'm going to put it in the proper perspective. So I consider myself and the things that happened subsequent to that as an African-American feminist activist. And that's where I did most of my work. And uh, it kind of shaped my life, my work as well as my legislative experience, because ultimately I realized that I could get more done on the inside than, the outs than I was getting done on the outside. And I learned that through the anti-apartheid movement. That was a big part of my work. I actually published a book um, as culminating, um, moving towards the culminating activity of my anti-apartheid work that was after my, um, because before it was anti-apartheid, it, it was the struggle for um, African liberation, in particular, the, the nations of the, southern, of the Southern part of Africa. And so let me stop. Maybe somebody has a question to ask. Um, and more recently, as I had shared with Kim just today, because when we talked earlier, I had totally forgotten. I have a book that will soon be published and it addresses African-American, women of African ancestry. I'm gonna refer to them as women of African ancestry at this point because they begin to resist um, <clears throat> when they were on, while they were on ships through the transatlantic trade, women of African ancestry did not just start resisting oppression when they arrived. They were resisting oppression on their way here. And it continued, and my book goes up to the 1980s, um, and there's some logistical reasons why but it goes up to the 1980s from the middle, from, from the transatlantic slave trade and the women who were on those ships up to 1980s. And in there, and this is what I shared with Kim, there is a significant piece on the women of the civil rights movement. And of most of them, are from those states that we will be visiting. Uh, almost all of them, except maybe a few, one or two from Washington. And the one that I admire most is um, one from Maryland. Uh, and, uh, am I forgetting her name again? Date, not, no, not, not Daisy Bates. Uh, she just passed on, so some of you may have heard. She just passed on and she was living in New York this year and she was 99 years old. Is that, is that so, Gloria Richardson? Yes, Gloria okay. Richardson. She brought yes, the Kennedy boys to their knees. Oh, right, yes, yes. Right, right out of Cambridge, Maryland. Yes, where my family's from. Like her. Yes. 
So, you know, so that, that, that. So it's a story to share and there are several others to share about the women of the civil rights movement. And that's, you know, now I've evolved you know, I've evolved from an activist to a legislator, and now I'm writing. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I think I will write more, but the major piece that I wrote um, that is re related to the topic that we are addressing now and will be going forward. Um, hopefully, um, it's, it's, it's scheduled to go to the final editing on May 3rd. And it shouldn't be long after that. Well, we hope to have copies of your book in time for the tour. Probably, uh, probably not May 3rd. That would be a little. I was thinking about covers maybe, but I, I, I will do those civil rights women for you in some kind of form that can be handed out to the participants. Oh, that will be great. We will, yeah, I will definitely. I, I made up my mind that I will do that because it's already put together. All I got to do is uh, make copies of it, and I'll figure that out. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're yeah. going to appreciate that. We have to always um, understand the women that have been the culture bearers throughout yeah. our history in this in this country. Um, Baba Rufus T. Stevenson. Um, I would like you to take a few moments and introduce yourself as one of our curators. I know you aren't able to come on camera, but we're gonna put your picture up while you speak. Um, Barbara Rufus, are you ready to join us and introduce yourself? Barbara Rufus, can you still hear us? He's off muted, but so I don't know. Okay. So we will come back um, to Baba Rufus. Hopefully, he'll be able to join us soon. And we're yeah, going to get. I'll just add, we know. I, thank you, Mama Salima. I just haki here. Um, but I just wanted to. Uh, oh, that's Baba Rufus' picture right there. <laughs> Kim, if you can see it. Um, can you see it? We can see yes. it. Okay, oh, beautiful. Well, thank you, Mama Salima. Uh, and I, it's, it's great to see you again. And it's good you keep working, and that's honorable. Um, but I am so appreciative that you're doing this work with for uh, Mama Gloria Richardson. My family is from Cambridge, uh, Maryland. Oh. And, um, you know, and a lot of people don't know about uh, her work. Uh, you know, I mean, and she was a both a disciple of. Dr. King and Malcolm X as well. So uh, I think it's uh, essential. And I learned more about her. I went to uh, the Reginald Lewis Museum had something on her and it was eye-opening. And I think I saw a documentary somewhere, but I'm looking forward to your interpretation and insights on that, but thank you. Thank you very much uh, for letting us know your personal connection. Um, to Ms. Richardson and we're looking forward to your anthology of women in the civil rights movement. We would love to include that into what we're calling our curriculum workbook. Mm -hmm. So this is the cover page of our curriculum workbook. Again, our tour dates are June 19th, which is not only Father's Day, but it is Juneteenth, our celebration of legal um, emancipation. And um, of course, June 19th was the day that Texas actually got word. We won't be traveling to Texas this year, um, but there are many freedom fighters from Texas as well that we hope are inside of our curriculum workbook. And we'll end on the 25th. So our Freedom Rides tour is a hands-on geography lesson, first and foremost, especially for young people and elders that have never traveled outside of the places where they were born. Um, that global learning uh, travel outside of your community is such a, a foundational experience. Um, when you travel outside the region where you were born, it helps you to better see yourself. 
And so this is a geography lesson that provides an opportunity for participants to visit 10 US states and explore the relevance of the civil rights era for young activists and artists today. So in our curriculum workbook, we would like to do that through self-reflection, living history and service learning. Um, we believe that we are teaching global citizenship for the human polity. And you know, it's, it's really important what you said, Ms. Salima, about your work in the anti-apartheid movement, because the civil rights movement, it influenced many civil rights movements and grassroots movements that held governments accountable around the world. And South Africa is one of those places. And it's because of our work here that that emancipation was able to take place. Many other partners, of course, Nigeria was a part of the emancipation of the South Africans, but absolutely the work of young artivists and activists like yourself during that era um, that made a difference. And so we're going to continue through our curriculum workbook um, with a basic overview. So the Teaching Artists Institute, which is our organization, was birthed in November of 2015 to provide an opportunity for artists to learn techniques for social transformation through the Thai Fellowship Program. Since inception, Thai has grown into an international socially engaged arts advocacy and training organization that plays an important role in the promotion of art for social transformation. We specialize in development of platforms focused on cross-cultural and cross-sector community engagement and sustainable development. The Teaching Artists Institute is supporting the Freedom Rides Tour with this curriculum workbook to encourage the holistic engagement and education of participants. So during the Freedom Rides, we'll be using living history reenactments, cultural immersion, and community service. Our tour cultivates the deep reflection and introspection needed for learning good citizenship in our human polity. So we have four basic um, modalities that we'll be using, experiential learning activities uh, to really help our participants holistically engage in not just the history of the civil rights, but the culture and symbolic landscape that the civil rights movement primarily took place on. And so first and foremost, cultural immersion. There are four ways that you can experience Southern culture and hospitality. The first is on the porch. For those of you that may be from the South, you understand what happens on the porch. Conversations, history, just like ancient griots from the continent, stories are told and they are important to the connection and fabric of the community. Where we're gonna use the porch to have important conversations that matter with civil rights leaders on our journey. Right now, our partner, the International Civil Rights Museum out of Greensboro, North Carolina, is in communication with Miss Marilee Evers out of Mississippi. You all know that her husband, Medgar Evers, was assassinated in front of her and her children in front of her home as a civil rights leader because of his work and the civil rights movement. And we're gonna have a conversation with her on the porch about what it feels like to heal what it feels like to forgive, what, is, what type of strength is needed to forgive that atrocity, the murder of your husband in front of your children, in front of your house, um, that kind of strength is something that's still relevant today. And then we'll go into the kitchen. There's nothing like Southern hospitality outside of the kitchen. And so, of course, in a perfect world, our tour would go through Charleston, South Carolina, however, we are not going to be able to go to Charleston. It's too far off our path. When we go through South Carolina, we'll only go through Greenville. However, we're bringing sand to the beach. We are working with culinary artists from across Charleston, and they're going to pack up their bags and meet us in Greenville, South Carolina, and provide the culinary arts experience that will teach them about the golden uh, rice of South Carolina and how they've used that and so many other uh, traditional dishes from that region to um, really taste what Southern culinary cuisine tastes like at its best. Then we're going to the church. You know, the Southern uh, states is really in a lot of ways the Bible Belt. That's how we refer to it. And the church hasn't always been um, 
a sacred experience for us. Uh, during the civil rights movement, uh, we had bombings of four young girls uh, because this church was a beacon for the civil rights movement. In the African-American community, the church has always been uh, in support of our socio-political movements. And the civil rights movement is a perfect example of that. And as a result, there was a church that was bombed um, and four young girls lost their lives. But is this any different than what happened in Charleston when a young white armed male came to pray in a church and then killed the pastor, several members of the choir, and the young girls that live to tell that story that bared witness to the death of their father, they're going to be a part of our roundtable conversation at the church, bombs and guns. Um, and then, of course, nothing in the South without Main Street. And so we'll have free time as a part of our cultural immersion, just shopping on Main Street, going into the pharmacy and making a sandwich, buying your cough drops and what have you, going into the antique shop. Um, these things for Southerners are very common place experiences, but on the urban jungle landscape, um, this is truly um, otherworldly. And so we look forward to seeing uh, what's gonna take place and what our participants will buy on Main Street. Uh, two, experiential learning, we have artivism the music of the movement. There's so many artists that are the theme song behind our rally cries. We have James Brown, Harry Belafonte, Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit, and then some of our international players, Fela Kuti, uh, Zombie, oh, Zombie. You know, these movements, when they came here for school, they went back to their regions and they told of what we did to liberate our people and how we held the government accountable to what they said were their ideals. And they used their music and their art to communicate their messages. Marianne Makeba, Soweto Blues out of South Africa, who eventually married Stokely Carmichael, a Kwame Ture. Um, however you may know him, uh, the leader of the SNCC movement and Black Power um, out of Greensboro, North Carolina at the A&T HBCU institution. Thirdly, we're going to have my very favorite living history reenactments. Living history is our way of using the theater arts to take history off the page and bring it to life and be immersed in it fully. So we'll have three living history reenactments during our tour. The first is mock trial. And our mock trial will be using Brown versus the Board of Education in our final destination of Topeka, Kansas. And I'm gonna go ahead and I think I hear someone in the background. Um, if you are in the background, uh, please mute yourself. Um, and if you're on the phone, I guess you can't do that. <laughs> So uh, mock trial, Brown versus the Board of Education, uh, it was a landscape case um, where we used the testimony of Dr. Kenneth Brown. Um, he, as a psychologist, he used uh, just white baby dolls and brown baby dolls to demonstrate the lack of representation, the inequality in the minds that was being internalized by the young people uh, because of uh, the dilapidated uh, facilities and the lack of materials and how young people were internalizing inferiority. And he used brown dolls and white dolls and the testimony of little brown girls to determine whether or not uh, separate uh, educational facilities were um, effective. And as a result of his testimony during the Brown versus the Board of Education trial, they determined that they were, um, it was time for them to uh, become one educational system, the one we have here today. Next, we'll go to the lunch counters the sit-ins in Greensboro, North Carolina, and we'll bring that history off the page and reenact the lunch counter sit-in movement. Um, and um, I, I believe that that will take place at the International Civil Rights Museum. Um, as one of our largest partners, we will be um, holding this scene inside of the original location, truly historic. 
And last but not least, our living history reenactment, we will walk across the bridge, Selma in Alabama, and we will sing We Shall Overcome and the rally cries and the songs, um, and uh, they will embody the spirit of their ancestors, some that lost their lives during that march across the bridge and um, celebrate those that made it across and lived to tell the story. Last but not least, service learning. Throughout our experience, we will have three service learning projects. The first will be a letter writing campaign. We're gonna write letters, each and every one of us, thanking those that lived and or died during the civil rights movement and talking with them about why that work is still relevant today. Uh, we'll hopefully be addressing those letters to those that are still alive and or the families of those that live on to tell the legacy of their parents, grandparents and elders. Um, next, we'll do a voter registration education. And we plan to do that in Africatown, Alabama. If you're familiar with Zora Neale Hurston's book, The Barracoon, then you know that Africatown is very significant to our history here in the diaspora. And it's an opportunity for us to tell our entire story. We didn't start in the civil rights movement. Our story and our history is much older than that. And though we appreciate that step in our journey and we celebrate what strides it did, what it did to help us move forward, um, we will never forget from whence we've come. And last but not least, Griot's Alive, community read along. So with the YMCA and their partner, the Freedom Schools, uh, we will work with Freedom Schools uh, to have the young people participating in our tour read like the Griots about civil rights and the civil rights actors to elementary school students. And so those will be the three service learning projects that we'll have on the road. Um, before I move on to our next slide, are there any questions about the four ways that we plan to immerse um, our participants into Southern culture? Okay, no questions. So now let's talk about where we're actually planning to journey. Um, again, the Freedom Rides Tour will travel through 10 U.S. states, starting in Washington, D.C. at the MLK Monument and ending in Topeka, Kansas. The following states and national historical monuments therein will be visited during our journey. So we'll begin in Washington, D.C. We'll go through Richmond, Virginia and visit a late afternoon cookout to celebrate Juneteenth with our local partners there. And we'll end in Greensboro, North Carolina for the day. We will celebrate at the International Museum. The next day we'll head to A&T and look at the Black Power Movement and what students are doing on campus today to live in the legacy of their ancestors. We'll head through Greenville, South Carolina for our culinary arts experience with those chefs from Charleston that are going to help us bring sand to the beach. And then we'll end our day in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, our curators, we will lean on you, one from Newland, Georgia, outside of Atlanta. And of course, Dr. Salima Marriott, we know that you're also um, now a resident in Atlanta. Yeah, and so we not yet, not yet, not yet, no. not quite. I'm still a resident of Maryland. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's as, in the making. Yes, I may be, I may be by the time the trip comes. Okay, okay. Well, I, fingers will, I will have a residency in Maryland too. Yes, yeah, ma'am. You can have two residencies, it's true. <laughs> and we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to lean on both of you as, um, we'll say, friends of Georgia. And, yeah, I've, um, I've had a lot of time in Georgia. My children have been there since college. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so we, after being in Atlanta, Georgia, um, we will move on to Alabama. And in Alabama, we'll not only visit the Freedom Rides Historical Memorial and National Museum. We'll also do the walk across Selma and Birmingham. Um, we'll then travel to Jackson, Mississippi with Tim, our conversation Tim, Tim. in the port. Yes. You ask, we actually can walk across the bridge? Yes. Okay. All right. I, I, I didn't know. Okay, good. 
that was still, I mean, like, like it didn't have to be like organized or something, but okay. It, well, okay. it does have to be organized and you do need a permit. Um, but we're okay, in the process definitely. of organizing our permit. We do want to do things in the, uh, you know, the confines of the law. We don't want to break any laws on our journey, on our <laughs> mark. Um, but we do want to actually walk across the bridge. That is uh, the immersive experience. Okay, beautiful. Uh, any more questions about um, the bridge or what we'll be doing in uh, Selma, Alabama? I'm excited. I've been wanting to do that my whole life. <laughs> Well, you will have your chance. Um, yeah. So next we'll head to Jackson, Mississippi, um, then down to New Orleans, Louisiana, the home of Ruby Bridges. Um, her uh, foundation is there. Ruby Bridges is still alive and well, and we look forward to meeting with her. Um, from New Orleans, uh, we will head to Little Rock, Arkansas, mm -hmm. uh, outside of Little Rock, um, the Little Rock Nine, at the um, high school and the uh, work that they did as young students will also visit Fannie Lou Hamer's Institute um, and the work that she did with the Democratic National Convention, et cetera. Um, last but not least will be our longest day of the trip uh, from Little Rock, Arkansas into Topeka, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And there we'll not only do a tour of the National Historic Monument, uh, but we're gonna do the living history reenactment of the Brown versus Board of Education testimony of Dr. Kenneth Brown. And so um, from Topeka, we will fly back and return to the Baltimore Washington International Airport. Um, named after Thurgood Marshall, another um, great activist from our history. So these are uh, basically uh, the locations that we'll go to. A full itinerary will be published later in um, our development. We're looking for your contributions to our schedule. We're looking for your information. As curators um, that live during this this era in history, there may be unsung heroes that we need to include and recognize and acknowledge and memorialize the work that they did. So please help us to do that. Um, at this time, I wanna circle back to Mr. Rufus uh, T. Stevenson and see if he is able to uh, introduce himself and talk a little about his curation. Mr. Rufus, are you with us? I, uh, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yes. Very good. I had difficulty with the cell phone, uh, and I got on the computer, and I ended up on my uh, a house phone calling. Uh, thanks for inviting me uh, to be a part of the Zoom meeting. Um, my name is Rufus Chafing Stevenson, and I was born with the name Rufus Stevenson, um, but back in 1973 in Mali, West Africa, um, um, that experience changed my life. Uh, and um, Malians want to know exactly what uh, what Rufus Stevenson meant. In Africa, every every name has a meaning. And of course, I knew for Stevenson, Rufus had no meaning, but I knew Stevenson um, can be translated as the son of Stephen. Uh, so the Malians gave me a name, Chafin. And uh, Chafin means um, um, uh, it's a proper name for a male. Um, it means African man or black man. So I took that name, and I, when I was stationed in London, as a diplomat at the embassy in London, I put that name in my passport. So my name, official name is Rufus Chafing Stevenson. Uh, good evening to everyone. It's a pleasure being here with you. Um, my path go, goes all the way back to Mohouse College um, from 62 to 64. Um, I had I, I entered Morehouse College, and evidently, when I got to Morehouse, I had saved enough money to pay for three years of college, working in the, uh, white folks' uh, backyards, uh, front yards, raking leaves, and doing all kinds of things, as well as working on a tobacco farm in Massachusetts. So that 
took me through Mohouse College without, I didn't have to work while I was at Mohouse. I lived a, a leisure life there in the Glee Club and singing with the uh, Atlanta University uh, 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 chorus. Um, it, where to start talking about, I was at Mohouse during the whole uh, um, initial um, civil rights movement, and of course, uh, many memories uh, come to mind. Uh, uh, during that time, one of the main things that comes to mind is I remember when Malcolm X was, when he debated at Harvard, and the next day he came to Morehouse that scared us all to death. Uh, I know it scared me to death because black folks in the South didn't, didn't call the white man devil or devil. Uh, but Malcolm X and Morehouse was calling the white man the devil. And, of course, we said, we thought about that in the South, but we always said it silently so no one would hear us say it because of the the the, the, the trauma that we had all gone through uh, living in the South and whatnot. Uh, but Malcolm X uh, shook me up, uh, and uh, I, I will never forget that uh, experience. Uh, but during that time at Mohouse, I also joined the sit-ins and one day I had a chance to uh, speak to Dr. King as he passed through the campus and whatnot. I met him and whatnot. Um, I did have uh, join the protests, and I, I, uh, I marched. And I'll never forget one day downtown um, in front of Richard's, uh, one of the great department stores in Atlanta, that we were trying to integrate, integrate the lunch counters and whatnot. Of course, you couldn't at that time. Um, women, you couldn't buy clothes and try them on and things like that. But I remember marching, and this uh, this white man came in front of me and and looked at me and spat in my face. Uh, um, and uh, of course, we had had um, uh, training prior to going um, downtown to march, and it meant that I just made a step around, a few steps around him, and continued with my back. Uh, uh, towards him, not knowing what he would do next. So those were trying times that tested us all and tested us all to prove, uh, as as Mohouse uh, was known, to take uh, country boys and turn them into, into gentlemen, scholars. And I was part of that movement. So when I left, when I finished Mohouse, I was the first Mohouse graduate to join the Peace Corps and uh, to serve in the Peace Corps, and I served in West Africa. Um, of course, that was a time, Lord. There was all kinds of things going on. My whole life has been filled with all kinds of activities and uh, traumas and and uh, love and peace and, and exposure and all kinds of wonderful things that can happen to a person coming from a little town in Georgia called Noonan, N-E-W-N-A-N. Um, I was the there were there were thirteen siblings and um, uh, children in my family, and I was the ninth child, the seventh son. And uh, I guess growing up, every summer when my mother's relatives would come down from Massachusetts, the first thing they would start asking, "Where's that seventh boy?" And according to folklore, uh, the seventh boy is the one that's supposed to see the world supposed to have something to say and travel and, and get educated and whatnot. And I was a seventh boy. I was a ninth child of seventh son. So growing up, that 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 stuck in my mind and 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 carried me through through Morehouse and and the Peace Corps um, and and studies in, in 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 Germany and in France and graduate school and army in Vietnam and. And uh, State Department, and uh, in Africa, and East and West Africa, and in London. So, uh, to make a long story short, um, it'll be my pleasure to to share the the curator's position uh, and and share the whole trip. I pray that everything will uh, realize itself as planned. Um, I mean, what else can I say? <laughs> Kim, are you there? Yes, Mr. Rufus, I'm here. Thank you so much um, for telling us a little more about your personal experience. And we look forward uh, to hearing so much more um, when it comes to um, the actual curation on the ground 
And um, we appreciate you. We celebrate you and Dr. Salima Marriott. Uh, we celebrate all the civil rights activists and we wanna make sure that we do that and give you your flowers while you can still smell them, as well as ensure that we capture the information, these jewels of wisdom that you have and uh, preserve them so that they're still around for the next generation. Um, so thank you again. I now wanna open up the line for questions. I see that we have several, um, several participants here on the line. This is our interests meeting. And so I wanna open the lines and ask questions. Please, please ask your questions. Tell us what you think about our curators. Tell us what you think about our route. Are we missing something? Do you know someone we need to contact? Come on off the camera, um, open your mic and let us know. We wanna hear from you. I'll go real fast, Kim. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Rufus. Thank you, Mama Salima. Haki, I'm here, everybody. For those that can't see me, I'm, I have my picture up and that's Mr. Rufus where we did honor him. My picture, Mr. Rufus, I don't know if you see that, but I'll send that one to you uh, a few years ago at the UB Blake Center where we gave an honor for you. So, so Kim, we don't take him for granted and his work uh, for sure you've been, or you and we have been honoring him for some years. Um, so, but what I, I just want to mention uh, two great uh, civil rights, uh, human rights leaders that we want to uh, add to those. Uh, and, and Dorothy Height, of course, uh, she's from the Norfolk area, but uh, worked internationally. And I believe she spoke at the Million Man March. Someone correct me uh, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, or as well as Ella Baker, uh, an organizer in Raleigh. No, wait a minute. I may have gotten confused, but Ella Baker was an organizer during the 60s and 70s. So uh, looking forward to, uh, you know, hearing more about those and, and just sharing with the young people. I'm not a curator, but, you know, just looking forward to listening and learning more about the, their work as well. Well, thank you so much. And please feel free um, to spread the word. We're looking for information to include into our curriculum workbook. And so if there's information you have about a civil rights activist or leader um, that isn't publicized, we celebrate the superstars, the Martin Luther Kings and the Coretta Scott Kings, but there were so many people out there, your grandmother, my grandmother, and we want that information too. So please send it to us. Um, this is your chance to promote and preserve your own legacy, your own history, and to make sure that they're getting the credit for what they contributed during that era. Um, any more questions or comments, um, please uh, let us know. We want to hear from you. Uh, you joined our interest meeting because you're interested, and we're glad that you're interested. Um, and so let us know. If not, then I would like to acknowledge our Thai elder, Mama Ade Olomo. Um, she's here. We as our organization, Teaching Artists Institute, we always depend on the guidance and leadership of our Thai elders. And so Mama Ade, I'd just like to give you an opportunity uh, to welcome our guests and to um, give us your blessing. If there are no other questions from our audience, if there's no one else that, um, you know, has a statement or comment, then Mama Ade Olomo, um, I would like to give you the opportunity to speak. Thank you so very much. Um, I want to uh, send a lot of love to uh, Mr. Rufus. Um, I have much love and, and a very high regard for you. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, uh, this trip is uh, historical for a number of reasons. Um, at this point in time, uh, we're being chastised for teaching what they're calling critical race theory. Is that the terminology? Um, and and um, we, we went to South Africa last year and I came back just so full from that trip. 
And I went into the classrooms and I said, Nelson Mandela and the students knew nothing about the man. It broke my heart that these students didn't know who he was. And he meant so much to all of us and to the struggle. Uh, the gentleman who took us on a tour, he himself had been in prison. And I thank that man for his warrior spirit. And I prayed peace for him for the rest of his life. Um, these people, we say that we stand on the, their shoulders. And so we need to continue to talk about them to speak their names, to sing the songs, to teach and to reenact and never forget. Because if we do, we're doomed to repeat all of these atrocities. Um, um, we need to continue to empower our women. We need to, to acknowledge the children's movement because the civil rights movement turned on the children and the activism of the children themselves, um, uh, jumping out of school windows and, and whatnot and, and facing dogs and uh, going to jail and singing inside the jail cells. Uh, that spirit uh, of, of, of the warriors in all of us. Uh, so, I'm, I'm so very much looking forward to this trip. Um, uh, just like I sat in Nelson Mandela's house. Mm -hmm. How many people can say that? Mm -hmm. uh, I will now be able to say, I walked across that bridge. Mm -hmm. Ha ha, I walked, and, 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 and I've been to Africa and I've been back. And, and uh, so that doorway of no return, I'm able to say, ha ha. I returned for all of we, all of my family line, everyone who was taken from there and I didn't know whether we ever gotten back. I wanted to be the one to get back and I did that. I stood back on the land many, many, many times. And so these kinds of trips um, that the Teaching Artists Institute um, has, has uh, brought forward it, it's an amazing thing for all of we. Um, I glory all of you all, Dr. Salima, Marriott Gibbs. Um, I glory you in the work that you do uh, and all of us and certainly uh, Kim Poole. I call her yeah. Kim Possible because um, this is indeed uh, a spiritual journey that we're all on and she, <laughs> She does it well. So thank you for listening to me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on the trip, on the journey. Thank you, Mama Ade, so much for acknowledgement. Um, when it comes from you, it just means more <laughs> because it's, wow, an honor and privilege to sit at your feet as one of our Thai elders. And Mr. Rufus, um, thank you so much for being a curator and Dr. Salima Marriott for agreeing to curate alongside him. That is balance, um, having a mama, having a baba to tell the experience. Um, it's going to be holistic. Um, of course, uh, this is our interest meeting, but we will have follow up meetings for curricular development so that we can really pick your brains and include the information that is relevant to make it um, more relevant for our participants. And so I'll be contacting you. Um, thank you again, and you all have a good night. Praise God bless you. Good night, y'all. Good night, y'all. Bye. Till we meet again. Yes, be safe.